sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. All organic seeds, all only a dollar a pound. MinorTea.com, authentic haven brand, 100% natural soil condition for the home garden. Squareman Worm Farm, organic farm and gardening supply. Located in Columbus, Wisconsin. SquaremanWormFarm.com. LittleSpringsSoap.com, handmade soap with simple, recognizable ingredients. The Garden Stamp, stamp planting for more efficient, effective, and speedy planting. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joy Baird. We're in the large garden today in our cold frame and we're going to get it planted because it's that time of year. So we've got our cold frame here and we've built this a couple months ago on the program. If you'd like to see that episode and how we built it, that link will be in the show notes below. We're going to plant this and we've got it, we can quadrant this thing off in four, or in eight sectors. Uh, we're going to use our garden stamp and the nice thing about the garden stamp you may think, well, why aren't you taking that, that paper off? It's got all the different uh, elements of what you plant and the, and the grid on there. So I'm going to leave that on there because that's really going to make planting this bed a whole lot easier and a whole lot more effective. So let's just start in, let's start in this corner here. We want to make sure the soil has been worked over. We brought new compost in. We've uh, loosened the soil and uh, we're ready to plant here. So. Let's just work in this. So we're going to plant radishes over in this corner and we can get 16 radishes in the uh, in that corner there. So we're actually going to do two different uh, beds of radishes. We're going to do we're going to do another 16 right there. All right. So let's get our radishes here. So that's planted there. Break that clot of compost up. So we're done with the radishes. I'm going to go across the top and then I'm going to come back down around just so I can have an idea of where I'm at. Now, put the garden stamp down. Oh, so I'm going to get my Bloomsdale long-standing spinach planted here. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave a spot for some beets right here, which we'll plant a little bit later. And we're going to plant some leaf lettuce right here. We're going to plant some chives here. So the chives I'm just going to kind of gently broadcast over top of it, uh, over top of the holes because I want to get a good stand, good stand of chives in the cold frame. And finally, we're going to do some carrots. going to do some red core carrots. And with the carrots, we can get 16 carrots in a stamp. So that gets our cold frame planted. Works out really well. Very easy to plant. The garden stamp makes it obviously a lot more effective on the spacing of where you're planting. So we're going to get this thing closed up. Now the, the thing you want to keep in mind about these cold frames, whether you buy them or build them yourself or make a low tunnel like we have over there, is how hot is it getting inside of it? Obviously, on very, very cold days, you want to keep this thing closed and only harvest during the peak hours of the day, the day when the sun is at the, at the highest point, so it has enough time to warm back up before the cold, frigid nights. Now, during the cooler days of late fall, you can get temperatures that are relatively warm. If it's warm outside and this thing is closed, it's going to be extremely warm inside and you can't actually bake the plants. So you want to... As we built it, we put a little stopper to allow the heat to vent out and then when you come home from work, you can simply just knock it down and close it for evening, for the evening and overnight. But you want to keep aware that, you know, if it's 50 degrees outside, it could very well be 80 plus inside this cold frame, just like it would be in a greenhouse. When it comes to watering your cold frame, you want to be very cautious. You don't want to overwater the inside and flood it because unlike if the plants were outdoors, it's not going to evaporate. It's going to hit the top of the, the sheathing there and it's going to become very, very wet inside. So you want to water on occasion when you notice the soil is becoming dry, but not overwater when it comes to that point. When it comes to untraditional ways of growing vegetables, one way is using a five gallon bucket. This was the kale that we had started in our 
box with our mystery seeds early this spring and once we found out it was kale we went ahead and put it in a five gallon bucket now we did a few things that was a little different than just putting it in a five gallon bucket we drilled holes around the base and we also put it in a tray or a pan here filled it with water and bottom watered it now we've got good organic compost in here the interesting thing about what this kale has done it has put roots on through the bottom of the bucket and absorbs the water that we put in the tray. Kind of like maybe a hydroponic type of system going on here. But you don't have to have ground to grow vegetables in. A bucket and a pail or a pan will work just fine. And plants want to grow. All you have to do is put them in the ground. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and comment. Until next time, I'm Joy Baird for more organic gardening and food preserving. For more organic gardening and food preserving, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.